violence against women and girls. Can you people hear me if I drop this microphone? Yes. 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 Are we firing on all available cylinders? Nigeria and Namawa State is like a, an eight cylinder engine car, a big Jeep or SUV, right? And you are going into a contest and you abandon four cylinders and use only four to fire. And yet you want to win. And the other teams are firing all their available eight cylinders. Or if two are challenged, they are firing on six, and you decide to go to the contest with only two, four cylinders. What do you think is the result? Will you win? No. Yeah. Will you win? No. Yeah. No or yes? No. Yeah. Fair. Fair. Now, that's exactly what we are doing in this country. Go to our population. Our population is almost evenly split between men and women. And suddenly we decide to fire only with the men, abandoning the women. And we think we can make progress. In everywhere we go, you call yourself a brave winner. And you decide to win brave for a very large family. You will always be stressed. You will always be not feeling happy. Because I don't know how much they pay you. By the time you spread it over three or four women, if you decide to be a polygamist and 20 children, it will never be enough. That's why corruption will not stop. Okay? And I look at people. So for me, issues about women's rights, gender-based violence is a practical thing. It's a problem. It's not about stories about what God or whoever says. It's a practical thing. I have one wife. I don't intend to marry a second unless they take two us part, which was the vow to conduct of the Catholic Church. I have four children, which is what the national policy says, and I took my credit portion, and I don't want to have another one. Fortunately, or fortunately, there were three boys and one girl. I'm done. And even some of my friends did only one or two, and said they're done. So if you go and gather the whole world to yourself, now you have a look at the problem bring for your head. And those my three or four children, three or four children I mean, my promise I make to them and to my God is that if they have to go to Harvard, I will not steal money, but I will send them there. If they want to go to London School of Economics, I will send them there. Because that is the duty I owe them. So the fundamental question comes back, are we firing on all available cylinders? You hide the resources God has given you and you are complaining. How do you want to make progress? I don't know. So this brings us to the theme of this discourse. It's about the policy making context. What do I mean by the policy making context? How is your society structured? What is the economic position, social position of men and women as a foundation of your making policies on gender and SGBV? The second one is the mapping of the policy making ecosystem and process. There is an ecosystem. We are all connected one way or the other. Anybody who thinks he can have a disconnect is lying to himself. You need to make everybody happy for the society to work. We recall in so many years ago, in the other days, Abdullah used to be one of the richest men. In fact, he was at his time thought to be the richest man in Nigeria, had cars, was larger than life. On one of those days, he was going to his office in Victoria Island to have a meeting with some white men who were coming. Lagos traffic, have any, who among you has been in Lagos or still seen Lagos traffic? If you see Lagos traffic, you can be standing in one place for one hour. I'm just looking at this time. So Abdullah came in this big car and had a meeting in Victoria Land and was at one point doing to the motor was doing to 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 to. Abdullah came down and Okada and hide the remembrance of Okada person and said, drive me to Victoria Land. That's why all the Okada people say, Abdullah and Okada, they follow me. And Okada, yes. Now, what could have possibly happened? Maybe the traffic warden on one checkpoint did not come out or was not doing his duty well. But that traffic warden is somebody you completely ignore. And if he talks, like where he live in Abuja, traffic is gradually in the local axis. 
There are times we all behave like big men. I'm a lawyer. This one says I'm a doctor. This one says I'm a private secretary. You do not want to obey the traffic. This young man who is controlling traffic. I what one day the young man was overwhelmed. People would shout at him, blow me to the He said, okay. After I want to get you sit down. The guy went and sat down. For 30 minutes after a while, we all went back to him and said, we are calling more. <laughs> because I felt too big, I dropped my car, he carried a whole car. No, people are carrying you. We were calling you for time. After a while, we went back to him. I started begging him. And we all swore that we would obey him. <laughs> for him to come back. He said, will you people listen to me? You see, you people are too big. Now I can't do anything to you. Please allow me to rest. He said, okay, sir, we will obey you. <laughs> and we now joined him and said, anybody who was trying to disturb, we have everybody shouting, come on, get out. Get out, let, let this man do his job, let us get out of here. So I am trying to tell you about the policy context. No matter how big you are as a man, you cannot reproduce if you don't have a wife. You are not going to do it. There are also things you think you are too big to do, which they will do. There are also things that, which if you leave yourself alone, you can't even solve it. So who says the agenda in the society? Is it about one big man sitting up there? Or is it about everybody being involved? The graveyards are filled with very important men and women. Who thought that once they die, the world will collapse? Hmm? They will die, nothing will happen. Nothing, absolutely nothing will happen. The world will go on. But if you get a senior brother who lives in the world, he's a lawyer as well, he has his nine children who are he's very fond of. So one day he asks the smallest boy who is less than 10, say, and you been a guy to you, what will you do? The young boy looked at him and said, Daddy, and shook his head, say, Daddy, I will cry, but I will eat on that day. Say, he's going to cry, but he's going to jump. So, do you see? You think, oh, you are living your life for these children, the one will collapse. The boy laughed and said that they will cry, but 